Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We began to read the book of James, and we are to chapter 2. Um, chapter 2 is Evidence of True Faith. It's the title over the little headers, kind of tell you what the chapter is going to be about. Evidence of True Faith. So we learned when we were reading chapter 1, James was, there were two James that were apostles, but they believe this James was the brother of Jesus. Chapter 2. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man, in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, Hath not God chosen the poor of the world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Think about that one in today's world. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. So that's, you know, that's a, a strong word there. If ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin. Verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that has shown no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? Well, we have an argument in the faith community today about faith and works, don't we? Well, here's what James is saying about it. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needed, which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. So he makes a very clear statement about this, the faith and works issue. Verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. And I think some confusion, if I dare go here. Um, we know there's scripture that says that we're not saved by works. No, we're not. We're saved by faith. But James is pointing out faith produces works. If you believe in Jesus, if you believe you are to love your brother as yourself, you're going to do things for people. And you must do.
do things for people to express your faith. You must express the love of God to others to express your faith. Verse 18, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, the devil also, devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? So works. In this case, Abraham was being obedient to God. He was being tested to the ultimate. His promised son was uh, being required to be sacrificed. But you know what Abraham knew on the inside was he was holding to uh, the promise that God had given him that he would be the father of many nations and Isaac was the heir appointed. So God may have been requiring something of him, but he knew, well, I will obey the one that's promised me and has performed and given me the son because uh, he's greater than I. He's able to raise him back up. And that's really what, this is just almost like a, a four, um, uh, like the typology of God giving his son for us. It was almost like that test. Would you give your son for me? I'm going to give my son for the world. That's how I see that. Verse 22, seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. So uh, Abraham believed, and that was counted for righteousness. Just like you and I, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that is what is required for us to inherit eternal life so no it's not by any works we do it is by faith in jesus christ but let's see what 24 says ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only likewise also was not rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Well, that is what James said about the issue. And um, we know it's in the word of God, isn't it? I believe that everything that's in this word I read was authored by the Lord. He moved on men to write things that were important to know, and we are to glean from each of those. And uh, there's a balance with the faith and works issue. We don't come into the kingdom and plan on doing nothing. The Lord does have requirements of his servants. We are servants. We are also become the sons of God as we obey the Lord, and we are friends of God as we commune and keep fellowship with the Lord. Praise God. As we draw closer, the Lord reveals more and more to us. As you love the word and you love God and you want to obey him, he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So as we love him, we want to do for him. We want to um, strive to be more excellent people as ambassadors of Christ. You know, when you see ambassadors go to these 
big government meetings representing our countries, they they go they've been proved to be excellent. You don't send somebody that's tacky and doesn't know what they're talking about to represent your country. Hopefully you don't do that. So we're representing the Lord Jesus Christ and it is time to just step up to be excellent, to uh, be servants of all. The disciple is not above his master. That's what my grandson sent me in that beautiful the grandson sent me a, a scripture. I love it. The disciple is not above his master. Jesus was teaching that when he was so uh, bathing the disciples' feet. He was showing them. He, the master, was serving them. He came to the earth to serve us. And the whole thing was a lesson. We are to serve one another. No one's above anyone else. The rich man in this kingdom should be serving the poor man. The poor man serving the rich man. There's just a leveling out in the kingdom of God. We are all one with the Lord. And uh, God's not a respecter of persons. And we are told in this uh, part that we're reading that we should not be respecters of persons either. Well, let's go and do some good works. Not because that will save our souls, but it will bring rewards in heaven. You do want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. A faithful servant does things. Praise God. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Be blessed. Have a beautiful day in the Lord. And um, let's go serve one another with love, true love in our hearts for one another. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Be blessed.